show the documents. you looking at the body, the body revealing itself to the mind, the mind is quiet enough to hear it, the mind finding itself in the body. The practice starts with this invitation to let the body get on with things itself. You can just get out of the way of the practice. Be aware of interfering, trying to control. We're making our attention to the body receptive, easing, releasing. Beginning with the face, just letting go of any hardened expression in the face. Let go of the face we were told in the street. Some feeling of sensitivity come up to the surface of the face. Allowing the feeling, whatever it is, pleasant or difficult, to reach into the present moment. This is for a lobin. It's recording. And it's off for the lobin too. That's my reminder to start the recording. <laughs> It's not very clear at focusing, is it? Gig at 3 pm. The tongue. Getting a sense of the jaw inside. Getting a sense of the jaw from inside the mouth. Cheeks. The nose, the cheeks. Temples. Temples. Pulling the in breath. Pulling the in breath. Mm -hmm. to push through any armour there. Breathing into the feeling of the shoulders. The feeling of holding up, of carrying the shoulders. As we breathe out, letting go of the shoulders. Dropping the weight of the arm. to the feeling in the arms. 
and breathing out, letting them hang heavy from the shoulders. Noticing the particular quality of energy in the arms. The feeling of reaching out to the world and then the hands feeling there, holding, grasping, touching. stomach, the abdomen. Again, the different quality of energy there, and digesting the feeling there. In the lower back responding to the breath. The hips and pelvis opening up in turn to the breath. Line. Then breathing into the upper legs, thighs, and letting them loosen out with the out breath. The flow of the breath, taking awareness into the knees, letting the lower legs drop away from the knees. of driving energy held in the legs, the feeling of connection with the earth. Feeling the earth nourishing us through the legs, through the feet. tender knowledge of the ground bare in the feet. Imagining the body accommodates the breath gratefully. The sense of the body appreciating the breath, the energy it brings. It feels refreshed and nourished with each breath. Imagining the attention in the body as a tender presence. Imagining the breath as a kindness between us and the world. It is always there for us, unbegrudged. The world is not creating the separation between our breath and the air around us. We don't need to grab it. Breath is coming in like a gift from the world of life. The out breath is the body letting go of its boundaries. Feeling the spine reaching down into the earth, through the legs, feet, spreading out into the earth. Feeling our common substance with the earth. As the back softens, the shoulders drop, the neck releases, the spine can lengthen reaching up through the back of the neck, through the top of the head, flowing up towards the spine. Feeling our connection, the infinity of the sky above us. Feeling the infinite sky nourishing us. The meditation going the body settles the attention and the presence of the body in the body and start to 
invitation to extend this awareness through the five stages of kindly awareness practice. Stage, we use the breath to bring a kindly awareness to our immediate experience of ourselves. To all of us, pleasurable. To all of our experience of the craving of our awareness. Rejecting or trying to sense any of it. Start by breathing in and releasing again around us, but around our resistance to the discomfort. Just the painful sensation here. Is it a feeling of fear and anxiety? Hello. Hello. Do you have a feeling of fear and anxiety? Not at the moment, no. What feelings do you have in relation to your responsibilities in the probate? Uh, not, not a lot. Would it be helpful for you to have feelings of fear and anxiety? Probably. Well, do you... Do you do you have any meditations which can encourage those feelings? The the meta the meta fearful yes I often do the meta fearful the, don't you? The 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 buyer Bhavna. is that what it would be called? A buyer is fearlessness. So, so buyer yeah. yeah, got you. I think I need to just turn off Jinanda. I mean, he was turned off a few years ago by some pretty mighty forces. But I listen to him more than anyone else I know. Who's that? Have, Jinananda. Oh, Jinananda. Best meditation, best meditation book on the market from Tree Ratna, arguably. Books <laughs> read or have we missed her, the opportunity to start at the beginning? <laughs> oh, my internet connection. Are you unstable, Lobin? You are. You keep cutting Prove in your and out. To Prove your stability to me, please. I've just changed it so it's it's using a different data source hopefully this will work better with my mobile data rather than with wi-fi as many atoms as there are in the thousand, thousand million, million worlds, worlds so, so many, many times, times i pay reverent salutation to all the buddhas of the three eras do you remember when i tried to lead a the first refuge tree woods retreat um puja yeah on, what happened? Something went wrong, didn't it? You see, even when I even when I clean my teeth in public on the on the um, on this channel, I feel I feel nerves um, and things go out of my head. Sometimes sometimes I can't be in touch with something and delivering it at, at the same time. It's one or the other. I can either clean my teeth and I'll get it all right, yeah, Varochna, not Vajra Sattva, etc. etc. Um, and the thing I usually say is my version of the serenity prayer and all my bottom teeth. So by the power of all the Buddhas, 
grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And then I'm going to then I'm going to add in the the big gob that will be Vajrasattva. Yeah? That's brilliant. It okay. really is. Good. Can you can I'd like to I'd like to see how successful Paul measure the success of Paul Crossland in this world by how many people clean their teeth in the same way as instructed but the transmission is only to you so it's up to you to teach people to teeth clean in this way and when I walk into public bathrooms and see people teeth cleaning in exactly this way then I will know that I've made the impact on the world I wanted to make okay well no responsibility on you for me to feel I've lived a worthwhile life or not. Yes, it, it does seem to be quite a bit of pressure on me. You, you, is, this, is this you trying to encourage anxiety and fear in me? <laughs> um, I just don't you like the odd challenge? Or have you got enough challenges? I've got enough odd challenges. Tell me what your odd challenges are, and then I'll give you some <laughs> even ones to balance it up. Well, I suppose staying in a horse box for five weeks is an odd challenge. But when are you doing that? Uh, I should I should be going down on Monday. Shh. This is being recorded. Oh well, do they know what that means? These mysterious no. people that that follow us. You, you're talking about you, our followers. I'm talking about whether MI five or MI six <laughs> have, have whether they have an automatic trigger that records the call as soon as anyone says horse box. Yes, that's true. Actually, yeah. Because yeah. horse box is code for profound meditation practitioner and profound meditation practitioners, if they're also social activists, are the biggest danger this government has. Well, that's probably true. Unfortunately, none of the profound meditation practitioners I know are effective social activists. No, and, and none of your so effective social activists that you know are profound meditators, I dare say. Uh, that's why I'm wanting, with your charisma and my know-it-allness, to bring it all together at Refuge Tree Woods. Uh, once people have read the book, I've realised that one of my top priority books needs to be Invest in 2066, 2066 with us. Well, you know what could go wrong, don't you? What? It could end up with your charisma and my, my knowingness. Yeah, that would be the wrong way around. <laughs> That that would yeah. be terrible. I mean, I've had a charisma bypass. I intentionally try and put people off who who are not uh, innovators and um, early adopters. I'm not interested in communicating with people by and large who are um, late adopters, early majority, late majority, or laggards. What's yeah. what's 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 what what's an early adopter? Someone who will take something up up quickly. I mean, I there's a friend who hails me as someone who's led the trend on so many things. He says, you know, when you were 13, Paul, I used to laugh at you wearing Lycra. I laughed at the first mountain bike you brought along, um, aged about 18, because it looked like an overgrown BMX. I'd never seen anything like it. Yeah, you you spoke about restorative justice before I heard about it from anyone else, etc., etc., etc. I'm an by his measures, you know, I would have nothing to do with Facebook until you'd been on it about five years. Then I saw it was valuable. And now I'm more addicted to it than you, Paul. So, um, you know, he sees me as an early adopter of things that he's taken up afterwards. He now says there's lots of people wearing Lycra. There's lots so you're of people very quick to conform to the group, to the group norms. Is no, 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 no. I'm an innovator. Well, that's not innovator. That's following, isn't it? Look, look, okay. Sorry. The categories from the tipping point are uh, innovators, early adopters, um, le late adopt, early majority, late majority, and laggards. If we're going to divide it into five, so I've won the Social Innovation Camp Award, as I've said before, for coming up with the idea for the best web or mobile um, app to reduce youth offending and youth custody. Yeah. I've been recognised by a leading think tank that Jonathan Porritt set up called Forum for the Future as years ahead of his time, years ahead of its time in developing the low carbon economy by creating a site for everyone to share everything that they own and build community at the same time. And um, 
different friends have said that you Paul you're 40 years ahead of your time or you're 400 years ahead of your time I think the people who say 400 years ahead of my time actually saying they don't want anything to do with me because by the time they're dead nothing I've said will be relevant it's a way of getting rid of you without insulting you isn't it you know? yeah yeah you've, <laughs> nice to meet you Paul you've come 400 years early you're See you so again advanced then. I can't possibly deal with you you're just too advanced yeah yeah. And, and and my use of hashtags. People don't get it that I will double the vote if I stand in an election again, just on, a, or just on the basis of the way in which my hashtags will all meld together at that point. At present, they don't make sense, but in retrospect, they will, because they will help people jump between things, concepts that they haven't yet... That, that, that don't make sense to them yet, like democracy of needs, deeper legitimacy parliament. People will be able to jump around these concepts much easier in the future than they can at present. So I'm embedding all the things I write now with these, so I can be, be seen as the creator of the concept of democracy of needs or deeper legitimacy parliament. It will all root back to me. And then people will say, hang on a second, he came up with those two massive brainwaves, plus whip free accountable mavericks in parliament. So we need to follow him because and and read his text far more closely because five years down the line they might actually be the main thing we're talking about i'm not frozen no i know you hadn't <laughs> you know, you're just taking in words of wisdom have you now uh have you obtained this document from her majesty's government uh, well, this is not from Her Majesty's government. That's, I think, that's what the um, what we've done. We've um, we've initiated the legal team from the co-op, and 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 that's what they've been doing. So, so hang on a second. There was a will. Your mum wrote a will. No, while she was a mental capacity. Why not? Oh, hair pulling out time. Let's see how much hair you've pulled out. You, yeah, I can see why. I mean, I mean, textbook error. Everyone knows that before your mum gets dementia, you've got to get her to sign a will. Don't they? Yeah. Well, uh, well I mean, everyone, children... everyone knows that after the event, I think. But to say everyone knows it before the event, I mean... I think so. It was a I mass mean, thing on my mind. I mean, I I, I never... I, you never thought about that at the time? Not before she, not before she, she had dementia, no. So there what wasn't, you, there, wasn't what much of a, there wasn't much of a window of opportunity, really. What, what, what would the window have looked like? It's, it's a panel of glass. Oh, uh, I prefer the round window on play school. <laughs> well, it would have... It, it, when my dad died in 2008 and, and she got dementia probably 15, so... You had seven seven, years, I mean, seven years then? Seven years to do the, it, the, it to the, occur to me. And I, I'm just not... I'm just you're not, not that kind of person? Well, I'm, 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 I don't know what other people I'm like, but I'm certainly not very. Are you like Margaret people. Thatcher? Nothing like Margaret Thatcher. She Ronald Reagan. These people would have definitely got a will. Trump, to Donald Trump, Trump or, or Vladimir Putin. Which one of the four are you like? Trump would have. There's only four it. types of character. There's no, those are the four types of character in the world. It, it's Which, a really poor. It's a real poor choice. That that is. I'd like. I'd like a bit more variety. Okay, uh, Gautama Buddha, um, Jesus Christ, Muhammad Ali, and, and the Prophet Muhammad. Praise be upon him. Praise be upon him. So, which which of, of those eight are you like? Well, I'm aspiring to be like one of them, or to become one. Jesus of them. Christ, you want to become Jesus Christ? I'm aspiring to become the Buddha, as you know. Oh, right. how, how was I supposed to know that? <laughs> For all I knew you were aspiring to be Margaret Thatcher in your next life. No, that would be most disappointing. I mean, okay, but I, if you're, but if you're, yeah, the fair, you're, I mean, it's not, it's not, you know, to be somebody of that significance in, in some ways, not to be sneered at, right? But, um, I would, I would, I think I would feel like I've, I've made a wrong turn somewhere if I was reborn as Margaret Thatcher. But if you woke up as the Buddha in your next life, would you not say, hang on a second, this has come a bit soon? I, 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 I definitely would, because, I, because, of course, to wake up as the Buddha, you'd have to wake up as somebody else that becomes the Buddha in a world where the Dharma is completely gone. 
Oh, the next Buddha is called. Well, we don't know because we, we have oh, we a, have a, we have we a have nickname a, for him. Well, we, we, you're sort of thinking, you're thinking of Maitreya Bandhu, aren't you? Or Maitreya. Yeah, uh, Maitreya Bandhu, he's, he can easily be found. He's at London <laughs> Buddhist. <laughs> no, I've even got some of his books. You're thinking of Maitreya, but we do have we do have a linear version of time going on in, in our head, you know. There's no reason why you can't be reborn into a period period which we would see as thousands of years, millions of years ago, into a world system, you know, where Yeah. This this is this is a bit like this is a bit like um the sequels to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yeah, I, I hope you exactly because he gets born back into the earth, uh, it's somewhere at Islington only quite a few hundred thousand if not million years before the date he's familiar with when the earth gets destroyed yeah and of course islington looked very different in them days it looked very different and he didn't know which of the um which of the lines of bi bipeds to follow as the ones which uh, which eventually became human beings and it might have actually been the crashed bunch of telephone sanitizers from another planet who turned out to be the, the human beings. So I don't want to give too much plot line away. Just if you if any of the audience hasn't read Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the restaurant at the end of the universe, life, the universe, and everything. So long and thanks for all the fish. And can you finish my, my list? There's, no, I can't. I thought there was only four store. I thought it I thought it was a I thought it was a a, a, a trilogy trilogy. In Trilogy four parts. In four parts, yes. Okay, maybe it is. In which order do they come? Restaurant is second. Yeah. Thanks for all the fish is the last one. Yes. Oh no. That I think I'm not sure if it, if it's the universe at the end of the world. No, 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 no. Are we wasting are we wasting people's time? Because they could easily look this up on Wikipedia. So let's not speculate further. The point is you, you really do have this idea that someone taking an interest in this, don't you? I, I, I'm telling you that this is mainstream media um 400 years from now. <laughs> of course, because you're 400 years ahead of your time. Yeah. Can you not treat our audience with more respect? Their time matters. I mean, admittedly, they are watching 12 screens at the same time. Um, but but you know this is one of those screens and I, I want it to count yes i mean what what that is interesting isn't it how i imagine they will be able to tune in now to this but that's because you have a different view of time yes i mean i did see i while i was five weeks um in my lowest ebb of my bipolar warrior cycle I watched pretty much every film I could find on YouTube that was about time travel. Oh. And one of the ones I enjoyed the most, there was a um, guy who was trying to promote a band and he became very cynical about promoting a band. But somehow he came up with this idea of what if this next gig was the equivalent to the first gig uh, to a particularly famous pinnacle pivotal gig of Bob Dylan or to Woodstock or something. So he created this idea of putting on a gig um, for future time travellers, the one that they would all love to have come back to. Yeah. And come the night of the gig, to cut the story short, he looks outside, there's nobody there. Two minutes later, he looks out, it's packed, people saying, can we get tickets? Is this really the first gig that so, so and such and such person did? And they're wearing t-shirts, which all have dates of gigs of this person whose very first gig it is, but years in the future. Wow. Yeah, so they have time travel back to see the first gig. And they think it's remarkably cheap because they've got loads more money of the currency than, than the, current, the current price. And um, she's a bit, they didn't put in this touch that I wanted to put them put in. As I was watching it, I wanted them to sing along to the lyrics of her new song that she'd never before performed. But they didn't do that in this film. But that would have been the obvious, the obvious thing to do. Yeah, that would, that would have been the obvious thing to do. Yeah, sure. he briefs her. However they react, just go with it. Just do your best. And, you know, she can't understand as a fresh performer why they're why they're swaying along to it so much and enjoying it so much mm. um but as i say what they don't do is sing along to the lyrics which would have freaked her out um so um i loved that concept of putting on a gig for people who would love to time travel back that is how i would like you 
to view these calls. Although they're no longer called Alobin specials, they're just that hashtag Paul and Alobin end hashtag thing. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to sing my song now, Paul. I want you to sing along to the lyrics. This, this is uh, the but, first. This is the yeah. first um, time I've ever done this song. Right. And I'm going to sing along to the lyrics. You know it. Okay. Ready? Yep. Are you going to do any of the lyrics or shall I do them all? You, you start and I'll join in. Okay. Right. We wrote this for the future, but it's already gone. We love you all wherever you are, especially if you're alone. We are here for everyone. We're giving you all our best. We know it's all a bubble and it one day shall burst. I can only remember the first two verses. Yeah, that was very good. I'm very impressed with that. Thank you, Paul. So, so I do know. I, 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 no, 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 no. Now I've got into it. Can I, have, can I have the last two verses, please? Otherwise, it'll be bugging me all day what those last two verses were. Oh, um. Or shall I look it up on Wikipedia? Look it up on Wikipedia, but you'd have to... I don't know if it'd be on but there. I forgot your stage name. Because you did it under your stage name back in yeah. back in 2036, I think was your biggest yeah. year. Jammy Squigs. Jammy Squigs. S-Q-U-I-G-S. Right. And it, I'm right, isn't it? 2036 was when you made the top of the... Um, of, of the... Um, what's it called? Hier hier not hieroglyphic. Um, those things that you see when you turn a prism, um, not quite like that, that, what are they, I mean, it's funny, these people my, on the few. My first <laughs> album is called um, Tabitha's I Hypothetical Tabernacle. Yeah, everyone knows that, but um, I'm just trying to remember, <laughs> I'm just trying to remember what those things are called, where you see it as if the person is etched out in front of you in Star Wars. They do it, and there's a there's a there's a hologram. You know, hologram, yeah. So you were top of the hologram chart in '36, yeah. Yes, yeah, so obviously I, I had my serum, my youth serum. So I appeared as a 22 year old. Right. I wonder how you did such such athletic athletic gymnastics in that video in that hieroglyph, not hieroglyph, hologram. That's right. Okay. So it was funny. Yeah? The the music promoter, one of the main things he did with his sidekick, because he had a very keen sidekick. He couldn't understand why this uh, kind of um, intern had, had, was working voluntarily so hard for someone who was a nobody in music production. Turned out, of course, that the sidekick to, was the actually the son of the performer uh, who'd traveled back in time to yeah. see to see his mum perform because unfortunately she died in a car crash when he was quite young and everything but what they do is they go around record stores because the film was made in the 90s or is set in the 90s and they take out their cds for their band and put them in front of the main bands on the on the on the stand and what the music promoter wants to know just before the young man his intern disappears off back into the future again is can you give me some top tips about how to promote better in the record stores and he says ah oh, record stores there's another store <laughs> there's something i could tell you about but you'll just find it out for yourself yeah brilliant <laughs> there were quite a few touches in this film i wish i could remember the name and the, and the singer really was good who they who they put on so um so you can't remember the name of the film no but i think i think i've given you enough clues that you could do a google search it would come up with that there was another one that was an incredible dilemma because a stadium was going to be blown up with 11,000 people in it. And if you don't let the stadium get blown up, because obviously some people from the present get to know what these future time travellers are doing, people are travelling back in time, and this is a bit of a dodgy concept, in order to be there at all of the great disasters in history. And someone has found this by looking at photos of the great disasters and seeing someone who hasn't aged and who looks remarkably different in all of these pictures. Mm. So that's how he he cottoned on to the idea that there might effectively be a, 
the, the, a time traveling holiday uh, operation <clears throat> operating that, uh, that that led people to all these disasters. And he then tries to interfere with the person, you know, who has traveled back through time. But the, everyone knows the more you interfere with time travelers, the more problems you create in the future. So they're faced with the dilemma of do they or do they not let the stadium be blown up with 11,000 people die? And um, it's said that if they let the 11,000 people die, then the new technology won't get out that kills many more in the future. So do you deal with, with real lives that you can see or lives that you're told about that can be saved in the future? Similar ethics were put into the program that got me out of depression, the program that helped get me out of depression and connect with my ethical basis most firmly was called 1944, Should We Bomb Auschwitz? Yeah. yeah? And the, the, the level of ethical dilemmas in, in that, because uh, I could so easily imagine myself to be in a position of, uh, of some authority in the Second World War. And would I have put all my effort on winning the war or would I have transferred some resources to bomb Auschwitz? Why would you want to bomb Auschwitz? Because everyone on this program suggested that Auschwitz should be bombed the moment it was known about. All, and they were talking entire, the entire Jewish community who heard about it. They thought they reflected on it and their entire response was bomb it to a man, to a woman. It was bomb it. And even when it was bombed by mistake, in September 1944, they had an interview with someone who was in the camp who saw the bombs coming down. Only 40 um, inmates were killed and 15 SS. Someone said to me, that's a good proportion to get 15 SS for 40, for 40 inmates, but um, SS guards. But guess what the person who was in the camp said when he saw bombs raining down from above? I've never heard this said by anyone underneath a, a, a plane's bombs. Yes, destroy the whole lot. Yeah, all of us. If you can get, if you can wipe this off the face of the earth, so much the better. That's a, a very powerful thing to say when you're in immediate fear of your life. Well, like, like, like the saying goes, there's much worse things that can happen to you than death. But not many people these days see it that way but you would if you're an Auschwitz I imagine yeah well yeah. We, that's, we just, that's, that's what you're saying isn't it really you, yeah you, I mean I've made I've made I've made quite a lot an in-depth film about about 1944 uh, should we bomb Auschwitz so if you're interested I go into the ethics of being a Sonder commander for example hmm. a Sonder commander is a, is a, a Jewish prisoner who takes on responsibility for fooling the incoming Jewish people that they're walking into showers rather than into gas tanks, gas chambers. So hands them soap and a towel um, to take in and looks after their possessions and all the rest of it. Um, you know, what a ethically compromising, integrity compromising job that would be for a Jewish inmate to take on. And yet it had to be taken on. And as I said in my other interview, there for the grace of God, go I. I don't know how I would behave under the threats of the system. But it took the Jewish community many years before they were able to make a film for the wider public community about what it would be like to be a Sonder commander, because that's an ethically complicated area. And they needed the much more straightforward narrative that it was Germans doing it to, to the Jews, rather than the Jews were taking key roles in helping it to happen. Um, you know, it needed that, that narrative first. But you, you sound interested in this domain. I don't want to repeat myself. Can I give you a link to what I said before about my three favorite um, Holocaust films that I think really get you in touch with values of importance? Um, Is it something you're likely to watch? Not, not, not in the near future. Okay, we can save, we can save it to Holocaust Memorial Day next January or yeah. something. So what's uppermost in your mind now is probate. We haven't got very far into that. Oh, no, you, I, no I'm not interested in talking about probate at all. It's, oh, you just wanted to chat with me? It, it, that, that's gone. That, that's, that's, uh, you think that's dealt with? Yeah, the reason we're meeting up is because we meet up on Monday. 
No, it never used to be Monday. It used to be Friday. And before that, it was Wednesday. But I'm happy if it becomes Monday now. <laughs> Literally, hasn't been Monday before. Well, it was last week. Apart from last week. <laughs> It literally, apart from all the other times it has, it literally has never been a Monday. Um, was it really? It was. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm surprised that one week can create the impression on you that this is our regular day. Well, it, we, uh, my understanding is that we said we'd meet again next next week, um, and this is next week. Yeah, I was waiting to hear from you as to which day it was going to be this week, because I thought you were choosing different different days. Would you like to make it Monday's three o'clock as a general standard? Or well, I'm, I'm going to be away from... I, uh, yes, but don't uh, tell MI6. Don't tell MI6 where I'm going to be. OK, so this is our last opportunity before you go to that. Yes, if you've got any last, last, last minute... Um, things that you need to know that I might know that you yes. don't know, which is probably not likely. Well, the true identity of the mole would be useful. Of the mole? Yes. There uh, is well, a mole I, in this field, isn't there? There is a mole in, there's a mole in the garden. I, I don't know what I'm only interested in the one near the horse box. Oh, I see. Well, I, I, I'll, I'll interrogate him or her. What, what's your ethical code on interrogation under these circumstances? Well, I'm using that metaphorically, but I'll get to know them a little bit. And... I was going to say, you yeah. know, I, I only approve of Buddhist interrogation methods with moles um, in, in retreat fields. I absolutely will be very uh, of the of the um, of the understanding that, that it's their field. I'm I'm the visiting person, mammal. Right. I'm okay. the one that's visiting. But uh, in, in, in order to interrogate at a time of its convenience, shouldn't you choose night time? Are they nocturnal? Uh, well, they weren't. When I've been on Buddhafield retreats and, and they've been coming up all over the place and they're in the shrine room during meditation, they'll come up underneath the canvas. And Yeah, they're blind rather than nocturnal. Yes. They? Well. But that doesn't mean they work 24-7. How do they know when to take a break? When they're tired, I imagine. Can you ask them about that? About what their routine? Any questions that you have breaks? for any of the wildlife in local okay. boundaries field? Ah, uh, you're giving away too much information to MI5. Yeah, but it's a double bluff, isn't it? Okay, all right, it could be. Yeah, we could be sending them on a long or a short, wasted journey. Okay. <laughs> and when you say look at local bando, you really mean Kamala Sheila. That's right. <laughs> And when we talk about moles, we know what we're talking about, really, don't we? Yeah. So the questions for the moles are, what is their pattern of breaks during the day and how do they know the time? How do they know the time? OK. OK. What about the other creatures in the, in the field? Well, if there's any badgers. Yeah. I like to know whether they're... In they are definitely nocturnal, aren't they, badgers? No, it depends upon the whereabouts of humans. In woods where humans rarely are seen, badgers become, break their nocturnal habit. Ah. So I think in refuge tree woods, although I don't usually reveal that there are badgers in refuge tree woods in case the farmer's watching, but, um, and the farmer might have a different view on tuberculosis. It's snowing out here. Yeah, yeah, I've got snow, but I'm not going to show it to you. Um, so the question is, about badgers, do they know any non-nocturnal badgers near them? Where are the nearest non-nocturnal badgers? But if and they're that, nocturnal, how would they know? Well, that's what you've got to... You, what, subtly, what you're learning about is the communication system between sets. Is there something equivalent to the internet for badgers? Yeah. And does it work on a psychic level, or are there actually buried wires between the sets? Okay? Okay, I've got it. All right. That's probably um, going to be enough because, I mean, that's a lot to, to be growing. Yeah, about. yeah. As long as you come back with some quality information about the life of moles and their tea breaks. Yeah. And the life of badgers and their communication systems with the non-nocturnal ones. Yes. And any changing trends between nocturnal badgers and non-nocturnal badgers. That will be plenty of information and you may even get an honorary David Attenborough program out of it as well. Or, or Chris Packham. Could you work with Chris Packham all right? I like Chris. 
yeah, he's got some he's got some um, neurodiversity that I can connect with quite well. Name name three favourite neurodiverse people. I'm going to name Greta Thunberg, Chris Packham, and Paul Wadey. Paul Wadey. Now there's a man. Tell me about Paul Wadey. Did he, when you last well, spoken to him? Well, he gave, just before I set off on this six year relationship that I'm in, he I said, you know, it doesn't matter that she's not Tree Ratna or a Buddhist. He said, well, I've settled down with someone who's born again Christian, um, and it's fine. Just let them do their thing and you do your thing. Um, and I said, I bought your book, um, which is about um, something like prete pretending to be a normal in a, it, um, when you're an Aspie. Yeah. Um, I, the, it was the, the Aspie's, the, the Aspie's Gorilla Guide to Normality. Yeah. Or something like that it was called. It's a Kindle book. I'd highly recommend it. Admitted I only got a third of the way through it. But for me and books, I have so many coming in that to get a third of the way through is real is real progress for me. So, so would you would you get that book or do I need to send it to you? I would love to read Paul Wade's book. Okay, I'm going to press pause. It depends. We're how recording again. Sophisticated their back doors are. Yes, mine's got a, a latch and a mortise. They're the best. They're, they're, they're and very some difficult. deadbolts, deadbolts, Yale, and mortise lock. Yeah, yeah, that's a good backdoor, eh? It's it's one of the best. It's it's, it's traditional. It's it's um, practical. It it it, it, it um, attracts a lower insurance premium. Yes. Well, there you go. So that's very very good. Have you got a good backdoor? Well. I mean, the back door is only made of balsa wood, but it's still got all those locks yeah, on it. Actually, our back door is, is really solid. It's got a great big key that you turn it with. It's one of my favourite features in the house, for me. I'm going to give you a minute on your own while I fetch a really nice key. Well, perhaps I should get you my key. key. Shall, I, shall we compare keys? We Let, let us compare keys. My key beats your key. In, in what in what way? It's definitely older, it's older simpler, yeah. and more solid. I don't know it's more solid, but it's it's definitely older. Well, okay. What I'm saying about this key is I can imagine this being the key that opens a church door. Yes. I can't imagine that key being any larger than a solid old door. Yeah. Well, it's longer than, than your key. Yeah, okay, I acknowledge that. Um, although we haven't really got an easy way of being sure because your finger and my finger might not be the same length. My my key is a finger length, uh, index finger length. Your key is an index finger length. It's um, just we know that my index finger is longer than yours. Look. Look, my, my finger only goes halfway down, look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I saw on the local news that um, a church was in a bit of despair because many years ago, they had lent a key to one of their old church doors to someone and they had no record of who they'd lent it to. And therefore that east side or whatever side of the church it was hadn't opened in so many years and they didn't want to hack away at the door in order to get it open. As a result of that TV program, a, a key mysteriously turned up anonymously and they got back into their church. That's and I feel you. that my mum, who used to uh, chair Christians together in Canterbury, 
may similarly have got an obscure church key here because this doesn't relate to anything in this house. I don't know what this key is. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, do you know, I've met some fools in my time, but none more so, perhaps it's a bit unkind, than a guy who, um, who succeeded me as entertainment officer at Oxford Polytechnic Students' Union. He was handed a big bunch of keys. Those keys that didn't relate to any boxes or doors or vehicles or anything he could find, he threw away. <laughs> and then I told him that, you know, hidden within the bowels of the Polytechnic were cupboards of equipment and stuff like this. Yeah? <laughs> He'd thrown away the keys because he, he couldn't see anything that they fitted. That's, that is really quite da a daft thing to do. Whereas, oh. whereas I suffer from the opposite fate. I have got drawers full of keys that I don't know what they relate to anymore. Are you like that? I, I'm not a hoarder, no. I, but um, I certainly, if someone gave me a bunch of keys, I wouldn't just throw away all those that I can't see any use for. That would be. So, how many keys have you got in your possession that you don't know what they're for? I would say I have got scores of keys that I don't know what they're for. Probably four or five. Okay. Fair but, enough. But this key, how old, when was this key made? 1902. 1902? Yeah. Um, I, I think you're about 20 years out. Oh, 1882 then? No, I think you're 40 years out now. Well, 1922 then, by my maths isn't any good. Yeah. It's, Did you I mean give or take 20 years? Yeah, I reckon that's in the early, early 1930s that was made. Okay, so you're so you're giving it to me. It's about ninety years old, that key. It was a plus or minus thirty years you were going to give me, weren't you, as a leeway? Yes. All right. So, um, imagine this key is the key to a Buddhist community that you and I live in. Describe what's behind the door, and where the door is. Well, first of all. It's miles away from the nearest city. Okay. Um, explain why. Well, with, with, with the location of, of the community that we live in is not in a city. But why? Why, why is that... A a selling point to uh, why is that a feature for you and a selling point for others oh well you didn't say that you, you asked me to describe what was behind the door well okay shall i write the characteristics down and then come back or or do you want to do it one thing at a okay, time? what what sounds like now what you want to do is say what would be a good place to have a community well yeah why not i mean because i've got very clear needs and strategies and i want to know whether your needs and strategies are clear well, for me, it, it, it would be, I'd like my community to be somewhere of use to others. Sure, but, which, which might require being just five miles outside a city. Or it could be that people get away to, to our community to stay, so it's a, it's a break for them from the city. Yeah, okay, but, I'm, but I've got a, a project that needs a team this summer, five miles outside of Sheffield. Can our community be set up on that timescale? Well, you know, I can't answer any questions on, on my future before March no, okay. 22nd. But I want to have an in-depth enough serious conversation for you to consider this as the first community building opportunity is that we have a community based five miles outside of Sheffield or eight, five to eight miles. There is a particular place, eight miles. It's lovely. Um, and that's set up in time for trees to be chopped down. Um, because in Refuge Tree Woods, Sheffield branch, I have until the 31st of July to chop down 60 trees of about 18 to 24 inch girth and 60 foot high. What do you want to chop them down for? They've actually got or allegedly got um, the larch uh, disease. So they can't even be taken without proper processing, they can't even be taken off site. Well, are you going to get a second opinion from a, a, a tree surgeon? No, I'm not. Um, 
when, what day are you going away? You can't get rid of me quick enough now. <laughs> no, I, today was going to be the day when I write to a senior order member about a series of strategies in relation to this, because he was on retreat with me and he came off retreat ready to buy a woodland for £50,000, yeah? Um, and he was buying that, not quite as a gift to me, but as an um, indeterminate loan with zero interest for me, yeah? That fell through. He got on the website before I did and found that someone had bought it while we were on retreat. Oh. I did, you know, when these things happen, I've learned through bitter, through not bitter experience, through um, getting my hopes raised and dashed, I've learned that the best thing to say is in what way could this have turned out for the best? Yeah. And instead of me being because I had the other half of the valley as Refuge Tree Woods, instead of me being alone in that valley, I have the most skilled woodsman I could imagine having, you know, with um, 15 years as a foreman in Polish woods uh, as his background, um, right next to me. And he's taken many trees down um, at a very competitive rate and some as a favour um, for me um, in that woodland, enabling me to do things that I wouldn't have been able to do if I'd have owned the wood, the woodland. If I'd have owned the whole valley and had to take some of the trees down that he took down for me to build the um, the the refuge tree woods cabin, I would probably have died under one of those trees uh, in being inexperienced in felling, and my dad wouldn't have been looked after. I'm doing a lot of what if, what if UK politics films these days. What if um, my favourite one, or the most popular one in the book, is likely to be what if Dominic Cummings had left the Leave campaign before the 2016 referendum and the result had probably then gone the other way, 52% um, 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 remain and 48% leave. What would the knock-on consequences through to the present day and beyond be of such a decision? And my friend painted a rosy picture of a Cameron government all the way through but I think he's miscalculated what Nigel Farage would have done. I think it would have led to uh, the Tories losing power um, without Farage gaining any seats. He'd have done enough to bugger up the Tories and we would have Corbyn in power. Um, I, 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 I think that the, the way I, I see what happened in the last election, um, add, add the Brexit thing not being an issue, Corbyn would have got into power. Yeah. I, I, that would, that's my belief, that Corbyn would have got into power. Because yeah. he, he had such a strong following. And, uh, and, and, and they were almost claiming victory in 2017. Yeah, they were so people. close in the one yeah. before. and uh, uh, there, I, wouldn't, there, there wouldn't have been a 19, 2019 election without Brexit being the hot potato that it was. So you have to rewrite the history in quite a convoluted way. We won't do that now because I've got other films for that. But I'm saying, but I like to say when I don't get something that I want, like um, a Buddhist um, luminary buying a fifty thousand pound woodland for me, um, I like to say to myself, well, if it had gone the other way, what bad things could have come from that? And what bad things could have come from that is that I'd have been on my own in a woodland trying to chop chop down trees well beyond my capability and I could have died. So it's far better to have a neighbour who I get on with who's got skill in cutting down trees than to own it all. So continuing the story, I'm writing to this individual who when when he didn't when when he didn't um, manage to buy me the woodland that I'd initially sought, I went and checked out other woodlands but they weren't suitable because I was thinking we need in Wales a refuge tree woods as a man's um, woodland and a woman's woodland for, for women retreats nearby. It wouldn't be so rugged and it would have more water flowing by it. So that's what I was looking for. But I've given up on that idea. It's enough to, to work on refuge tree woods and possibly expand to the neighboring field in order to host festivals more easily with a field and, and, um, and, and, thingamajig combination and woodland combination. Anyhow, this um, high-flying, land-owning, 
property owning rich Buddhist who'd been so generous to me on retreat, drove me in the most expensive car I've ever been in to my uh, woodland by Sheffield. And we walked around that together and he had a, a pleasant time. Um, I said, this is a woodland available for <coughs> the Sheffield Sangha to do X, Y, and Z. However, there are downsides, A, B, and C. One of those downsides is at weekends in particular, Barnsley and Sheffield um, Brexit supporting areas um, send out um, motorbikes and quad bikes into the woodlands. Some landowners try and film them, which is up to the ante, meaning that there has been bricks through vehicle windows, that they wear masks, um, that they potentially would attack anyone who could have a camera to film them, which is almost anyone now. So um, the issue of land use around Sheffield is something on which I was going to hold a conference talking about this is how you would tackle this as a, in, a, in a number of restorative ways. But I didn't get enough sense from the community that I spoke to that they were interested in anything other than traditional enforcement of land owners' rights and a battle that was going to involve um, trying to fortify uh, woodlands. Now, of course, when it comes to fortifying woodlands, the richest landowners are more capable of doing that than those of us who have bought a piece of woodland, even though we don't own a house. So, you know, am I expected to put massive steel barriers sufficiently around a woodland to stop a quad biker who's determined to get in and have his fun? From I would his say, fun? no, there's no, when you bought that woodland, there was, there was no contract that you signed that said that you had to do such a thing. I know. And of course, there wasn't a contract that was signed saying if large disease take, takes hold, I will have I will be responsible for felling um, all larch trees within it, which is a, more than a third of the trees in that, right. in that patch. Um, so it is a big responsibility and a potential debt of many thousands over my head if I don't get it done. They say you need to get it done by July the 31st, but I think I can extend that period. There are it must incredible... Be, there, must have been something, there must have been something that you signed that says that you <coughs> were privy to all sorts of um, rural legislations like that because no no you don't you when you buy a piece of property you don't give you're not given a clue as to what your responsibilities as a landholder are you are expected as a landowner are you're expected to have learned them here there and everywhere all your various responsibilities it might be that um, the thing that you can do that saves me the most amount of money is come on a retreat in that woodland with me at the time when i do some wood chopping and because there's a public path running along one edge of it, simply stop people from getting trees falling on their head by um, a system of shouting, I'm about to chop a tree down, hello Ben. All right, I'll stop the people walking by. Um, I, I, that I, might I, save me millions. I would have to I would have to be very comfortable that these trees need chopping down. I would want to speak to some, some tree surgeon who knows what they're on about. Sure. Well, luckily... Um, I've already left the key to the woodland years ago with um, someone whose partner is a very skilled tree surgeon. Mm. And what do they say? Unfortunately, I mean, the idea was they could take as many trees, they could take, um, forgotten the exact amount of, of tree you're allowed to take down a year, they could take my annual allowance of tree and use it as firewood. But I warned them about the um, quad bikers um, and they got so perturbed by, by the quad bikers, they haven't even visited the woodland. So, um, but Jaya Raja is my contact there. There are other, there's been another Mitra who's be, worked as a tree surgeon as well. It's a, basically a, a right livelihood team in the offing. I think it would be a very useful experiment for us to be the initiators of a right livelihood tree, team that spends a month this summer running a, a field camp for people in Sheffield under proper tree surgeon supervision who can help me um, from suffering the financial penalties of not doing what I'm legally obliged to do. If I don't do it on time, they can send in their people, the Forestry Commission, and the Forestry Commission can charge me quite a whack. I've known of tree surgeons charging 600 pounds a day. 
So for 60 trees, plus all the safety regulations that need to be put in around cleaning equipment every day before it goes in and out of that site and all shoes and all car tires and everything like that, I could be up for a really hefty bill for 60 trees coming down. So you see why I'm writing to a senior order member. I'm asking him if he can buy the woodland off me, but let me have ongoing use so that I can um, still do something with it in relation to Sheffield Buddhist Centre, because I think it would be a pity if this if this resource that is a nice short Yatra's walk away from Sheffield Buddhist Centre never got used as refuge tree woods. There's even um, a bed frame in it which Sangaraksh just slept on, not in the woodland, but he slept on it. So, am I understanding you correctly? You're talking about refuge tree woods, aren't we? We've got two refuge tree woods. There's refuge tree woods Wild West of Wales branch, and there's refuge tree woods Sheffield branch. And we're talking about the Sheffield branch. We're talking about the Sheffield branch, five miles out of Sheffield. And I would like to set up a temporary, at least, Buddhist community with the right livelihood task of chopping down trees at my expense this, this summer, a summer camp. So um, should we try? This is one of the questions I'm leaving. Le leading, leaving you with is would you be up for working with me and running a summer camp this summer can you take that to your horse box and and meditate on it i'll take it to my horse box and meditate on it but i'm your not provisional very keen... view is no sorry your provisional idea is no yeah i'm very i'm very resistant to chopping trees down so, so the local, the Sheffield Wildlife Trust knew that this disease was coming and four years ago sent in really heavy machinery and took all their larch trees down, leading only the poor little owners at the edge of the woodland who own little patches of it to make a pragmatic decision whether to wing it or not. And because money is tight for most of us, we, we winged it. So there's plenty of precedent for taking down all the larch in this woodland. If you don't take it down, it can spread by water courses, by foot, footfall, by all sorts of other things, and then more larch trees go elsewhere in the country. The more you know about larch disease, the more you'll see this is a necessary process. The only thing I'm resistant to is that I've been given two directives. One is to get all the tree um, trunks down by the 31st of July. The other is three years after the map to have gly glyphosphated all the trunks so that there is no remnants of the trunks left over. They're giving me three further years to that. And I'm hoping that we can find a better, um, a better way of stopping tree growth than using horrible, horrible glyphosate on 60 stumps. But I, but there's, I have no doubt that this, that the cutting, I, and there was an aerial inspection that led to a woodsman going from the Forestry Commission going to inspect a patch of trees on my land. It's marked on a map that was sent to me what, what trees he looked at. And he's just covering his back in saying that they either have the disease or are suspected of having the disease. He's pretty sure they have the disease. Who am I to question with that? I know how serious the disease is. The trees have got to come down. The roots have got to be stopped from regrowing, but I don't like using glyphosate. So that's, the, that's where I feel I want to pass responsibility on. I may want to sell it, between doing my responsibilities this summer and three years time when those trunks are supposed to have been gly glyphosphated because I would like healthy regrowth rather than regrowth interspersed with some horrible chemicals. So now you know that much information, are you a little bit more inclined to be part of it? Um. It's, it, I mean, basically, this is about saving my financial neck so that I can carry on doing refuge tree woods in Wales. And it's telling me to cut my, to cut my uh, commitments. It's telling me to sell this woodland so that my resources are concentrated. But in order to, but it, the legal responsibility lies with me regardless of whether I sell the woodland, as far as I know that the order has been issued against me and I have to complete a certain stage by this summer and another stage within three years time. So even if I go down the route of selling it to the neighboring farmer, I will want to make sure that he does this work. There is no way out of this work being done. It would be better if a Buddhist community got the benefit of it. 
and uh, and, uh, and of course I'm willing to pay people for their for their time. It's not just volunteers. I have to put serious money, get a nice property together, and see how you and I can can lead a uh, can lead a community. You on the spiritual and getting together, getting on together side, and me on the work side. But I wouldn't do it without there being a tree surgeon with really good tree retina links involved, and that's already there. And Jaya Raja will be a helpful support as well, because um, I had actually left this woodland to Jaya Raja in my will. So um, it's interesting that if I sell it, he no longer gets it. But if if I do this woodland task on my own, this is this is my greatest risk of losing my life this year. Yeah, I, the idea of getting COVID pales in comparison with this. If I go into that woodland in in July on my own to try and knock down sixty trees, I wouldn't. I wouldn't training. recommend that. I really wouldn't recommend that. Not a good idea. But the question is, how much money am I willing to throw at professional um, at professional tree fellers? Um, and what are my other options? And so, as I say, I'm writing a letter to the senior order member who was interested in this woodland before, saying that he that he can he can own it um, if he wants and at a knockdown price. And um, but I would still like it to remain a Buddhist project, um, et cetera, et cetera. How much would you sell it for? Nine thousand. It's yours for nine thousand. I bought it. I bought it for eighteen. And that was a few years ago. Are you chomping at the bit? Well, like, like, like you say, I've got to do my horse box thing first. Well, what I always like to know is a first reaction and, a, and then a considered reaction. Is your first reaction that I'm offering you a woodland which has got potential for Sheffield Sanger for 9K? Um, is, that, is that something that you initially think that sounds like an interesting project. Well, I, I, it, 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 it's definitely, um, it, it's a completely new idea. It's a completely new idea. I haven't been thinking here, you know, over the last couple of months thinking I must buy myself some woodland, but it, it, it doesn't sound like a bad idea. Um, there definitely needs to be a meta, a meta practitioner around there somewhere because yeah. of the tensions between the, the Brexit Barnsley and Sheffield estate crew and the landed gentry. Yeah, and you might get saddled with these. I'd, I'd need to know what kind of thing you like to get saddled with as well, because if people can tell you what you have to do on your own lap, um, then there's all that's, sorts of problems that, that might arise. That's basically, I would have never advised someone to get a woodland next to a road in case a tree falls on the road. This doesn't have that problem. It does have a path, but the chances of a tree falling on the path and hurting someone are very low. You get 30 people a day passing on that path at most. That's a busy day, 30 people passing, yeah? Um, so, um, yeah, the worst that can happen is that the authorities find you've got a disease and order you to cut down trees. That is the worst that can happen. And the worst has happened to me. And there's a lesson in it, and I can choose to... Um, say woe is me or I can say okay the university is teaching me something and there might be some good things in this it might actually mean that a Buddhist community comes together quicker with you and me um, leading it and, and it gets a very specific task done and, uh, and, and gets some men in Sheffield Sanger working together in a way that they value having done as well I, I mean I can imagine at some point in the future that I would be wanting to live in a community. Um, so that sounds, that part of the thing sounds very positive. <laughs> so what were you thinking of last time we spoke? Because you did end uh, the conversation with the most intriguing and most desired sentence that I'd ever wanted you to say, which is, uh, um, you know, something like I haven't got I haven't got it word perfect in my head, and you'll correct me from your memory. But it's something like um, there's just a chance, Paul, that um, I'd I'll I'll be setting up a community with you if you'd like. I, no, I, no, I didn't say I'd be setting one up with you. I said that we could end up in a community together. Oh, neither of us leading. You know, it, it, I mean, but given, I, I hate the idea the, that neither of us leads. Given that we're both 
got experience living in communities and you probably both want to live in a community again okay then, i don't i don't think you understand what, what you are to me although ben i don't know what i am to you but obviously I, I'm, I'm partly an interesting person to have conversations with on zoom once a week yeah you are a fascinating human being there's no doubt about that but there's a really big step up from enjoying an hour a week on zoom to saying we're setting up a community together to, to put this out into the world whatever this is yeah that, that we're going to be the aspiring Dr. M. Bedkers of St. Leonard's on Sea as the community. You, you, you really, what you've done, you've taken a sentence that I made and turned it into something very different. We're, we're now going to be the next Dr. M. Bedkers. <laughs> well, considering you don't know How who Dr. M. Bedkers is. from us, ending up in a community together. <laughs> the next no, it happened the other way around. I fed you the idea of the aspiring Dr. Ann Bedkers of St. Leonard's on Sea. It gestated in your subconscious and it came out at the end of the last conference in terms of maybe we'll end up in a community together. It's bubbling up. Yes. And so, then so the, the connection between the two things that they appeared in the same hours conversation. No, no, they, they appeared in consecutive consecutive conversations with a five week gap in between. <laughs> So plenty of time for it to bubble up, for it to go down deep and bubble up. You're resistant to being as big as Dr. Ambedkar in your aspirations. Well, you know, you've got to start young, Paul, if you're going to be Dr. Ambedkar, haven't you? I mean, let's be real. Having said that, I am contemplating standing, if there is another local elections. General election, surely. The local elections are a waste of time. The only game worth playing is the general election. Well, perhaps you'll have to educate me on that one. Yeah, you think local elections are worthwhile? Forget it. Well, what my thinking is, the chance of me winning are zero, but what you can do in an election is raise a lot of awareness. Yeah, but some some people are going about it the wrong way. I've filmed Roger Hallam in this last week. Do you know who Roger Hallam is? Yes. Tell me. He's the man that you filmed the other week. Apart from his fame through my channel, how else might a few people have heard of him? I actually never heard that name before. Okay, he is the main ideological force behind Extinction Rebellion in 2006. Oh, that man. 2018. Yes. So what was his research on at uh, King's College London? It would have been the environment. Presumably. No, the history of civil disobedience and the effectively the importance of getting five, three percent of the population into the capital city in order to make a change. Yeah, that, that his thesis was if you get three percent of the nation's population into the capital city, you can dictate to the government. Where, where, where do you think? he drew his strongest inspirations from? I'm, I, I really don't know. I'm not very politically aware in this way. I've no idea. Okay, so, so Gandhi and Martin Luther King, perhaps Nelson Mandela falling in behind those two. But um, it's very interesting if you can draw a thesis based out of the previous examples of civil disobedience, and whether the line does follow through to Extinction Rebellion strategy. I found reasons why Extinction Rebellion strategy is a false extension of the, of the line. That, um, that what, and I can't remember my arguments really, but what Gandhi was asking for is very different from what Extinction Rebellion are asking for. And it's only when you look at those differences that you see that Extinction Rebellion is not continuity of Gandhi. Or Martin Luther King. No, I, I have, I have a belief that um, it's a Pied Piper movement, really. Um, and can you define a Pied Piper movement? Because there were rats. And there was a, and, and did people conjure them away with a, with a Pied Pipe? <laughs> Do you not believe so? I believe that rats will. Oh, fall. I don't know if they did. I was just asking you. I mean, did. Okay, did, well, I'll did, tell did you the you... definitive answer. Yes, the pipe worked. <laughs> but because they didn't pay the Pied Piper, he took the children away. 
Ah, there you go. So in what way is that the story of Extinction Rebellion? Well, yeah, I don't know if Pied Piper is the right term, really. I, I... Yeah, I think, I think what you mean is it's a bit of a pipe fantasy organisation. Nothing to do with the Pied Piper at all. Well, but, it's like, at... but it's a pipe dream as to how you make change happen. I, I, think, it's, I think it's false green. I think, um, I think... Yeah. I have this belief that corporations that have done so much to pollute the planet are getting themselves into position of being the ones who are going to sort everything out. And I think that's a mistake. And I think- Who's XR, going to sort it out then? I, I, I think all of, the, most of the people who are in XR need to, need to be running it themselves rather than- You, you know what, Alo, there, yeah. is, there are so many good conversations I could have with you, but I want, because we've got who knows how many minutes. Well, we haven't got okay. long. It's ten past four. So just two hours more. So, well, I've I've got a I've got a conversation with Stephen at six o'clock. So one hour fifty minutes more then. And I'm okay. trying to have a bite to eat between now and then. How long does it take you to have one bite? Depends how big the cake. Okay, well let's take twenty minutes off. We've got an hour and a half to do this properly. Um, <laughs> This is the rest of our lives we're talking about. You, you, you're going on a solitary retreat. But and it's you, not, not strictly a solitary retreat. Because of the mole and the badger? No, not so much. It's because, because you'll I, be using the phone occasionally. I'll be going into town to collect my provisions. So in, in, a, in a, an official solitary retreat, you would be looked after so that you don't have to ever leave. As I will be looking after you in Refuge Tree Woods when you have your retreat there. Well... I'm not so sure. What, because of my mental health? Well, yes, that's a, that's a factor that cast out. Yeah, um, well, I can, I can prove to you that I've got a more effective system of looking after it than I've ever had before. By the way, the Shambhala Warrior Mind Training. Firstly, establish your intention to live your life for the healing of the world. Be conscious of it, honour it, nurture it every day. I, this has just appeared out of this notebook and I didn't know it was there. Wow, that's very auspicious. When you see weapons of hate, disarm them with love. When you see armies of greed, meet them in the spirit of sharing. When you see fortresses of narrow-mindedness, breach them with truth. When you find yourself enshrouded in dark clouds of dread, dispel them with fearlessness. When forces of power seek to isolate us from each other, reach out with joy. In it all and through it all, holding to your intention, let go into the music of life, Dance. What's the last word? Dance. Dance. Yeah. Well, I, I say dance, you say dance. Yeah. And that's because I was born in Leeds and you were born south of me. Let's call the old thing off. You say yeah. dance, I say dance. That was a really good closing, wasn't it? I haven't read the middle bit for a few years. I love that. And, and I just love that thing about... Um, it just turning it, up in my notebook. Yeah, that's the what, whole thing. Is that's lovely. That's, that's lovely. very auspicious. So, I believe that you and I together of rain that falls. you and I together can be an effective Shambhali warrior, warrior team in a way that we can't be individually I think you're right um, but I don't think you realise what you are to me and you haven't owned up to what I am to you other than an interesting person to spend two hours a week with on um, I didn't say I think I used a better word than interesting Interesting is a very ambiguous word. Yeah, I know. When you when you give when you're trying to raise money on the door and you give people information about what the charity does in India, two words you don't want to hear was wor worthy and interesting. They're non-committal words yeah. that are trying to smooth you over, but it's not going to lead to a they're getting commitment. you ready. They're getting you ready for the it's like the, the, for, they're getting you ready for the no, or they can't even say a no. Yeah. So they just have to give you slight words of praise for what you're doing it's like saying that i think you're falling the ahead of your time or something like that it's probably as bad as that yeah yeah so so, so i didn't say interesting I, I i said something much stronger than that fascinating you're fasc fasc fascinating human being with a great key to who knows what you see you know what your key is too which makes it far more boring than my key my <laughs> life's task is to try every door I see until I find which one this opens. Absolutely. Yeah.
Um, guard the key with your life. What should you guard with? What well, you life? could do, what we could do is find a door that that key opens. Have I not just said that? Yes. But I want and, to and, and, and should we have it. should we have a big team with us? Should this be should this be the task, the, the right livelihood of the of the community that we lead? is the followers of the key. Because when I was at private school, age seven, I set up a magic magic magnet society. I had a magnet with a shape that you could put, lodge a pen in it and spin it round. And you could ask it questions and it would give answers and it would be the magic magnet. And three of us would follow the advice of the magic magic magnet. But mostly it was me who was doing the question setting and the spinning. So I think... I, I held a little bit more power than the other two in this society. Yeah, that rings a bell. That you haven't changed a great deal somewhere along the line. So I'm the holder of the key. Mm. And however many of us there are in the Pied Piper community are going to follow the key wherever it leads. Well, I think we have to um, have periods of custodianship over the key. OK. Uh, uh, you, can, you can be the... I'm trying to remember the Monty Python and the Holy Grail equivalent. Someone holds the holy hand grenade of Antioch, for example. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, so, so, is there anything we need to cover? Because I think we've, we've covered all the main points. No, we haven't covered the main points. <laughs> the main points is... It's not for nothing that my dad and your mum died within three months of each other, leaving us free to set up a Buddhist community. And my political life and authorship life have come together at this point. But sadly, the, polit the political situation we're in is, is very restrictive. There's no limit to what you can write. Well, not at the moment. No, that's true. So it's important to get the books out. That, uh, that will change the society. They're pouring through me. I just know that I'm incoherent in this format. But when I get them, when I get them into the written format, yeah. they are they are potentially transformative. Not only of Tree Ratna. Are you they, saying, Paul, that that um, you want to live in a community next to your wood? Yeah, I think that's what you were saying, really. No, I haven't said this at all. I've said I've said that I I have I have a number of responsibilities. I mean, we won't go through all of my seven roles, but given the right circumstances, I need to be in a position come the next general election to stand as an independent candidate. And my candidacy only has strength if community work has been done on the ground um, that relates to me. Um, in over the previous years. So that's why the aspiring Dr. Ambedkers of St. Leonard's on Sea, who can do a myriad of wonderful tasks, um, equal to the food bank in value to the community, that I would love to see that happen, but that's not going to happen until you and I are on a much closer wavelength than we are on at present. What do you mean by closer wavelength? So when I talk about the aspiring Dr. M. Beckers of St. Leonard's and Sea, I tend to be met by a combination of two things, laughter and sense of overreaching oneself. Right. That we're not on my wavelength, where you, when you respond to my best project idea on those two levels. Well, um, what I find with you is you conflate different things. Um, So, we, because in your mind, different projects merge, which, which they have to, you know, you have to yeah. integrate them into your life. So, so your Sorry, life can is. I, can, common... I just, can I just illustrate this with three projects very simply? Yeah. yeah. So, one project is to run the Festival of the New Society, producing grassroots manifestos. Yeah. One project is to write a book called The Myth of the Heartless Story, based on my experience of the last. General election and my advice for what needs to happen in politics to make to is that heartless with an H or with an A? Um, that's a really poignant point you make here. Um, I'll I'll explain the significance of that when you want me to. But 
Can I complete my point first? Well, you have to complete your third point. Yeah, that's what I mean. Third pro three projects fit together really well. Yeah, running running the um, Festival of the New Society each You've year. You've done that. Yeah, what's the second one? Writing a book about the artless story. That's right. And the myth of. That's right, the myth. The myth of the heartless, in this case, spelt with an E, but she is <coughs> also the white heart of East Sussex without the E, yeah? Ah. So that's where the ambiguity lies. She's called Sally Ann Hart, and um, a ethereal individual called Magic came up to me and spoke to me about, about the importance of connecting with the heart, and he meant the white heart. So he was foretelling the coming of the MP, who at that stage was unknown. I have had various downloads from people, you know, one who said that there is a wizard coming from the woods who's going to transform St. Leonard's. And what she was doing in saying that was planting the seed in me to become that wizard. So um, there's, there's a lot of pretty ethereal things happening. The book was going to have the subtitle, The Would-Be Wizards of Hastings, telling you all the people who are now dead, who have given me various messages. I didn't want to- I think that's a great line, by the way, The Would-Be Wizards of Hastings. That could be the first line of a song, couldn't it? Or a poem. But, but I've realised that I lose so much of my potential audience. There is a playlist, and I've given away all my secrets in that playlist. Many few people will find that playlist. So, so really, um, we're, we're left with... You know what Siri is on a phone? Siri... Siri... Siri, Siri wants, to, wants to join in the conversation now. I think it might be MI5 or MI6 playing with me because I haven't pressed the button. Um, <laughs> we're going to get interrupted by Siri from time to time. My, my, my title for the book was The Myth of the Heartless Tory, The Would-Be Wizards of Hastings, and The Phoenix Stroke Kite of Deeper Legitimacy Parliament because a kite fly, following me to Refuge Tree Woods has shown me all the qualities necessary to have a deeper um, democracy in this country. And I could write about that kite as my familiar to pick up on the theme of the wizard, but I've decided to drop that because my audience isn't ready for me to present myself as a would-be wizard with a, with, a, with a kite as my familiar. In fact, there are three familiars, I said, that um, the kite, um, sorry, let's start from the hippie. The barn owl, which you didn't see, is the hippie energy. The raven is the classicalist energy. And the kite is the punk energy. So you need the appropriate familiar for the appropriate circumstances in both your um, individual integration and in community integration. And the most interesting, one of the most interesting sites I've seen is the fight between the classicalist and the punk for the highest perch in Refuge Tree Woods which on the map is listed in Welsh as belonging to the Raven. Just like people say the Tower of London belongs to the Ravens. Well, I used to live at Ravenswood, as you know. I lived at Ravenswood too. Okay, so, so I, can write an, I can write a magical political book, but I lost faith over, the, over my period of depression that I had an audience for a magical political book. It's too far out there. So I've reeled it in and I found a beautiful structure for it. I found three main characters apart from the local MP. There's me, there's my oldest school friend who was the first person I saw ranting and railing at a Tory MP. This Tory MP was quivering uh, 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 as a result of this guy's verbal attack. I've, I know no one else with as powerful invective as my friend Chris Gidlow, author and historian. He literally, has, in interview, has said, I can't wait for the revolution. I'll be amongst the first out there shooting Tories when it, when, it, when it happens, yeah? So he's one of the characters in the book that I'm writing. So is Tony May, um, hashtag St. Leonard's local so treasure. It's not, it, it, I, I thought it was going to be like um, a factual, serious sort of um, piece of research type book. Sorry. I, I, 
sorry, it's factual, it's serious, and it's well researched. I, 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 I defend all of those categories. But you sound now like it's a work of fiction. No, the three characters are Chris Gidlow, my oldest, my oldest friend with the strongest invective against Tories who would shoot them come their revolution. That's that's not fiction. So he's happy to be there and be depicted as he, as himself then. Yes. And so is Tony May happy to be there and depicted as, as himself. Local treasure of St. Leonard's, who's won the won a community award. He's been a cleanup man for many years. Um, he's against inheritance tax, minimum wage, and all sorts of other things you wouldn't think as a working class bloke he'd be against. He's totally, he's the num my number one supporter for kinder politics. And has written to the new statesman. But he wouldn't be he wouldn't be into your idea of having a a national um what what do you call it? Everybody gets um a living. No, he no, 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 he 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 is not in support of the um pensions at 30 is the my simplest way of framing it now. Yeah, everyone needs to put in 10 years worth of national insurance contributions before they get, um, before they're entitled to a pension, which is the same as at present. But the entitlement age is lowered as far as 30 as an intermediate step towards universal basic income. Um, that's that's what I put forward in my he manifesto. He wouldn't agree with the universal basic income. No, nor would he even agree with pensions at 30. What we haven't established is what age he would be prepared for pensions to be lowered to. Now the pandemic era has come and we can't have full employment. So that there's an ongoing negotiation. But what you need to know about Chris and Tony is how much they fractured at the time of Brexit. Chris Gidlow said, basically, I hate that man. He has ruined my this country of mine. I will never speak to him again. Yeah. These are my two best friends in St. Leonard's. And they're just on the point of convergence again. And they've almost agreed a manifesto which goes almost as far as a basic income. Tony and I, uh, sorry, Chris and I are in favour of the of the uh, of, of, of pensions at 30. We haven't got a figure from Tony yet as to what age we'll go to, but we have got an article that Tony May, um, it's a New Statesman article called The Welfare Conundrum. Tony May supports every sentence of this thing produced, although he would describe himself as more right wing, you know, he was shocked when he found when he read the leader of the New Statesman and supported every every paragraph. I simply don't support paragraph eight, which says such payments are not and should be made unconditional. The welfare state is not a substitute for work, but a temporary protection in its absence. Under the flex security model, the Nordic countries have successfully combined a flexible labour market with high levels of social security. The UK has the former, but the absence of the latter leaves individuals exposed to the vagaries of the market and bad luck. So half of that paragraph is the only bone of contention between my extreme left Christian socialist Tory hating friend and my and my Brexiteer unashamed nationalist friend. You will see these people as characterized as being on speaking terms before 2016 becoming polarized and then through a skilled series of interactions coming together into a conversation that is the culmination of how we bring the country back together again. So that's the book I'm writing, which the subtitle is now Trust Those Who Give um, Voice to Their Opponents, Political or Otherwise. Yeah, that's the subtitle of The Myth of the Heartless Tory. Forget the would-be wizards. Forget the phoenix and the and the kite and the familiars. I've condensed that down to one chapter within the book. So I've, I, I I now know that I've got a damn good book, and I've cut through my anxiety around publishing by choosing a self-publishing route. So this will be, unless I get into some really bad depression states or a tree falls on me in Sheffield near Sheffield in July this will be a book that's out there this autumn ready for the christmas market will i be allowed to shout timbo yes has that got you on board yeah as long as i can shout timber that yeah you've got to shout a bit better than that that's yeah, well, sounding like, like tim is a bore yeah i i 
I am um, obviously this is that was my first ever what you know it's my first ever go at it. It takes time. Okay, you practice that. Will you show people be looking around them for the trees, horse. trees while you practice them in a field with a horse box? People will be walking through the field and, and out of this horse box. <laughs> yeah. So if I had to predict what your response would be to my summary of the myth of the heartless Tory and the and the dynamics of how three characters end up in unison who have gone very different paths. If I had to predict what my what your response would to that would have been, it was not, will I be allowed to shout timber? There you go, you see. But can you give me a bit of a response to whether you think my book is going in I, the right I direction? Think, I think it's a fabulous idea to... Because um, it's a book about friends and bringing them together again. To look at healing divisions in society by personifying mm. those divisions as people. Yeah. Um, I think that... that and making that correlation, I think that that is a really good idea, and, and I think it could work really well. Um, what advice would you give me if you were my literary agent? If I was your literary agent, or even my illiterary agent, my, my illiterate I'll agent. I'll off with a second. Um, Do you want to be my illiterate agent? I I would suggest. Um, I mean, I'd be interested in 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 um, there's a whole area that of, of interest which I I would like to get your interest in or views on. I mean, but you know, so you want to ask me, will I be covering this topic of division in society? I don't think you will, but I I, I think can I can I tell you I that think you're, you're, I think your I, I think your your subject matter. And the way you the way you're dealing with it is excellent, and I think it's going to be a very interesting read, a very a oh, interesting and worthy. And worthy. <laughs> no, but I think it's going to be. Um, Got to do better than interesting. It's mealy mouth the word. <laughs> mealy mouth, you know. And I think in 400 years' time, it'd be well received. No, seriously, I I I can really see that be, being um, timely. An interesting contribution to the political sphere. I'm trying to think of another word for interesting now because you are. Yeah, of course. Yeah. The way you will um, explore that will be, and you know, we'll we'll, we'll um, get 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 one wrapped into it. I, I can see that being really useful. A timely, interpersonal, truthful saga. It, a truthful saga. Yeah, yeah. and I, and I and I think it it, it but I, I I suppose what I, I'm thinking is that it's. It's very fashionable as well. I mean, you're dealing with the. It's predictable. Is it? That word is one I wouldn't want to hear. I no, know. I know. I suppose. I suppose this is. I'm trying to give. I'm, just, I'm, I'm trying to put a finger on something where. Um, who, I suppose who, I'd like you to delve more deeply in some ways. Okay, the book does. I, I think it, it's almost like you accept the premise of what the problems are and. And you're coming up with a way of really exploring the solutions, but I think no, no, okay. there, are, there are more so, interesting things going on which you you, you might be missing, perhaps. I, I I agree, I agree. Okay, so one book cannot go to the fullest depth. No. But one book relates to one version of reality. Yeah. That, that has a wide audience. It and once has a wide audience, yeah. And once they're fans of yours, you take them to a deeper level. That's the plan. Ah, now that, that makes sense to me, the strategy. And I suppose you're thinking like a politician, aren't you? Yeah, I'm, I, I, am, I am producing the first ever convergent constituency manifesto. Yes. By bringing together the two most opposite friends I have, first of all, the next book is going to be the quest for the Convergent Constituency Manifesto. I'm going to handpick people to come into the circle, and the other two will each handpick people to come into the circle. And eventually we will have a wide team of experts and all classes and all backgrounds um, finding the ground on which they agree. Yeah, and, and the other thing there as well, I mean, you were you alluding to, to um, magic and uh, wizardry. Yeah, yeah. And what you've got there is some classic sympathetic magic going on in, in, as well. Another way of looking at it. Yeah. 
and, and, and I will hint at deeper depths when I tell the story of Teapot Lady in one of the chapters. Um, Teapot Lady. She she has I mean, you I told you what she's led what she's led me on to, haven't I? She's led me on to the Buddhist Bible. And from the Buddhist Bible, I've ended up on the Buddhist teachings on social and community harmony. So they form part of the book as well. Mm. This will be this will be an intro to Buddhism, an intro to um seeing more in the world than meets the eye, um, which is what Teapot Lady did. Every time a word was used, she would she would pick up on its associations. Yeah, it was incredibly rich what she did with language. And she didn't mind that I would fall asleep because she would talk and talk and talk. She said, it's going in the back of your head. And it did. She connected at a level that is bizarre. And now, I'm really interested in Teapot Lady. Yeah. She, she, she was a familiar, sorry, she, she lived in a house full of cats and dogs who weren't her pets, they were her familiars, yeah? And she practiced homeopathic um, veterinary medicine on them. That's marvellous stuff. Now, yeah. Paul, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of the time and I've got to um, do a few things between now and six o'clock. Yeah, we've established those things will only take 20 minutes. So as well, long you... as we're finished by 5.40, that gives us one hour more. I'm afraid I, I'm, I'm flagging a bit, so I'm going to have to... Um... How can you be flagging with such stimulating in input? Well, it is very stimulating. That's the point I need to process okay. now. And, and let, let, me finish, let me finish my point. So just three of my projects were highly interlinked. The, the, the Festival of the New Society, the Myth of the Heartless Tory, and Standing in the General Elections. Yeah. And when I felt no longer able to stand in the next general election, I thought I'll no longer be able to uh, write a book that's got any clout, nor will I be able to recruit people to the Festival of the New Society, because those three projects are closely intertwined. But I've recovered in such a way that I've slimmed down all three projects. I'm not putting pressure on myself to make the next Festival of the New Society great or the one after that. What I'm seeking is people who are willing to invest in the Festival of the New Society 2066. Unless you're willing to invest in the Festival of the New Society 2066 when you might well be dead, I'm not interested in you. That is why I'm saying I'm not here for the majority. I'm not providing services that will be easily recognizable. I'm here for innovators and early adopters. And the rest can criticize me for my overuse of hashtags, for my critique of Tree Ratna, or whatever they say that puts me out of my mainstream. But you are virtually my only link to Tree Ratna now. So if, if, if anything I do is going to gain ground within Tree Ratna, we need to build our connection in a way that makes it much more substantial than Zoom calls. It has to be about living together in the near future as a proto-community. And, and that gives us something to, 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 to think about for, the, for our next conversation. So what are, you, what are you taking away with you? And can I see it written down on a piece of paper? Um, well, I've got to ask the moles about um, their... I'm, I'm, happy to, I'm happy to pause the mole conversation. We'll do that in Refuge Tree Woods sometime. We have moles near enough Refuge Tree Woods, probably. What about the badgers? We, we've got badgers, definitely, in Refuge Tree Woods. Um, their I'm, communication system. Yeah, so I'm happy. I'm happy that we leave, that we park that, and that you just write down in the next minute what I would most like you to think about, and then you read it back to me, and I say whether I think you've got it or not. Go on then. What would you like? What would you most no, like you, you me said, to think you, about? You, you said you've already heard it. I don't want to dictate to you. I want you to absorb what you've what you've heard, and tell me that you've heard it. Oh yes. What what? I'm, you know, I'm, slightly, I'm slightly now. You just basically you just told me that um, you've got three projects which are very closely into a lot intertwined, and for you, in your heart and mind, they go together. And what did I say after that? Uh, and then you said something about um, our. You have a tenuous connection with the true Ratna, namely mm -hmm. me, um, and you seem to think that your way you're just, of strengthening your connection with Tiratna is to strengthen your connection with me 
and that you seem to think that that's quite an urgent thing. I, I sensed I sensed a murmur of urgency in your voice when you were talking about us um, perhaps ending up in a community together, which I stressed last last week was a very distant possibility, but one that's springing to my mind. But it, I, I hope it hasn't held too fast in your mind just yet. Yes, it's some. It has a significant bearing on my sense of well-being that I believe that there is a possibility of us establishing a community together, not just being in a community together, but establishing a community together. And I'm able to offer a six bedroom house to you here. Um, well, that could be a preliminary sort of stopgap where we can we could meet up and live for a few weeks and, and have some proper conversation. Well, yeah, I, I, you, of course, you're welcome here the moment I decide I'm going to um, extend my bubble to one other person. But I can also put you in a quarantined basement, which has got its own kitchen um, and a, you've got two bathrooms. So effectively, there's a there's a granny flat within this house. Yeah. Yeah. You showed it me. Did I? You did. OK, so what I've written down, as you're short on time, and I'll send it to you in an email, is this sentence. My connection to Tree Ratna is strongest through a low bin, and there is a feeling of urgency, but more, Im more importantly, a sense of importance um, in our looking at setting up a community together. Yeah, end of sentence. Now we're clear that that's an idea floating around. We haven't decided we're definitely doing that. No, I'm just letting you know what you mean to me. You yeah. mean to me, and it's a, quite, a, quite a thing to take away on solitary retreat, is my best hope of working with a team to make the, to make the things I believe I stand for happen. Without you, I see no team. I only see odd friends in Hastings and St Leonard's who do not have the transcendental ideal, uh, ideals we have. Yeah, I have a slight anxiety around what you've said. It sounds like you're putting too much on this particular friendship. Um, Who's to judge that it's too much? Well, I, I said it sounds like it. I mean, it it sounds like, you know, this, this could be one important friendship in a rich tapestry of important friendship. Let me get the mandala again. At the time when it was necessary for me to become a refugee from um, Kent Sanger, I identified the four friends in my life and their key role. So uh, Tony was in the position behind me um, as a kind of backstop man. I have Mr. X, because I don't put his name on film, who's my right hand man. He is someone I can go to about any conflict and will give me great, great advice. I have Chris, who's my fiercest critic and with my oldest school friend on my left hand side. In front of me is you um, representing the values uh, I want to grow into more. So that's the that's my personal mandala. And my the main woman in my life asked where she was on it. And I said, you're at a whole other level. But I would like you to be in communication on my left side by going into the forest and uh, practicing either uh, Virgin Mary or Green Tara practice. But essentially, I have a very clear vision of what people are to me in the archetypal realm. And now that I've tried to explain how you are in the forward position um, out of the four main friends in my life, and that I do only have four conversations at most like this a week, um, perhaps you can see that there is a, a clear disparity between yourself as someone who socializes with lots of people and myself as someone who just chooses four and tries to work with them in the most effective way. But you might have more, four, more than four people in the community. Yeah, sure. You'll be the main link to the people in the community. I won't be primarily responsible um, for 
how the community gets on. I would like you to be primarily responsible for how the community gets on. I want to be primarily responsible for how the work gets done. Okay, so we're gonna to have to leave it there because there's, I think there's loads of, there's loads that could to come out of that conversation. I think it's early days, that conversation. Sure, and you're a bit shocked at how much you mean to me and you sound, and your phrase sounds like I'm putting too much on the friendship. Um, it's, it's indicative of that. Well, I don't know. I don't know how I think and feel about it all really. Um, no, no one has asked you to play as significant a role in their life as I'm asking you to, to play in, in the course of this conversation and the ones leading up to it, where I was really clear that I wanted you to be the community leader of the aspiring Dr. Anne Bedkids of St. Leonard's on Sea. <laughs> well, we shall see what the future holds. And um, I No, no, that, that sounds fatalistic. We make our futures as well. Yeah. But, Thank um, you. You're tired, and I'm full of energy still. Sorry, we have. Sorry, we haven't got the hour that would help get us onto an even, an even place here. But oh, I we, think I think we've, we've covered a lot of ground, and and, and um, I've we, laid it down. I've laid it down how I see it, how yeah. I see the disparity between what you see this communication about and what I see this communication about. For you, it was an interesting exploration. For me, it was this is the route to the team. If I'm not doing this through this route, I've only got a secular project rather than a transcendental project, and I feel incredibly diminished by that by that uh, vision. By the, well, by the I'm, secular I'm, vision. I'm determined to help you in any way I can, you know, and hopefully you can help me in any way that you can as well. So we can um, help, you know, we can have a really good friendship and help each other to the full, you know, and turn the yeah. help button up to ten, you know. So support yeah. button, button, whatever it is. So th please that, check in I, with I, your generosity, because when I hear I'm determined to, to help you in any way I can, um, I hear something beyond the man who shouts timber in the woodland. Oh, surely, surely not. You can't, I mean, that's, that's a very big gift. And I've never said that to anybody, that I'm determined to help such and such a person in any way I can. I have never been that generous to anyone. I've always been more focused on goals than relationships. Well, that's interesting. There's a lot of interesting things come out of this conversation. Okay. Will you watch the film back sometime? Possibly. So there's lots of interesting things, but not enough to watch it back. Well, I'm, I'm aware of, of, of how much I've got to do over the next week and how little... How sure, little... I, didn't, I didn't give a time scale. How so about... Said, yeah in the next two months. And are we going on a Yatra together? Definitely. That's definitely. I, I'm doubt, on it's, it. I doubt it's going to happen. Well, I, I'm i confident it, it, it will happen, given that it, I think it can withstand a lot of restrictions. Have you have you spoken to Locobando, for example, about where he, how, how likely he sees it being since adver having advertised it? Not since I last saw him in February, in, in January. Oh, you've seen him in January? Yeah, I went down, didn't I, and spent a day in the in the horse box. Ah, oh, right. Okay. So um all that you went you went four miles to a horse box and spent a yeah. day in there. Okay. All right. Um That's four miles from where you're living, of course. It's been good, and I know I've pushed you to your edge. And I, I will you contact me from your horse box? I will contact you. I'll probably we'll probably have, we might even get another quick chat in before I go. You never know. All right. Make sure that your bite isn't too rushed this evening. Yeah. Okay, my okay, friend. Thanks. You've been generous with your time. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.